Let's go on now to component number four, which is dysfunctional mitochondria and also metabolic dysfunction. So as you can see here from my diagram, nutritional deficiencies, carbohydrate and fructose excess, also exposure to microbes and dysbiosis, xenobiotics such as herbicides and pesticides, and also oxidative stress, all of these contribute to mitochondrial dysfunction, which then increases the production of free radicals. This increased production of free radicals leads to antioxidant and vitamin depletion, which then leads to nutritional deficiencies, which then promote mitochondrial dysfunction and obviously a vicious cycle here. Also, that oxidative stress increases the activity of the pro-inflammatory gene activator, we might say, or transcription factor, NF-kappa B, and that leads back to more oxidative stress to create another pro-inflammatory and free radical mediated vicious cycle, as you can see here. So what you need to understand at the very least from this diagram is that mitochondrial dysfunction leads to oxidative stress and that promotes systemic inflammation. For this reason, we all need to be aware of the role of mitochondrial nutrition and what we can call mitochondrial medicine in the treatment of these primary care and specialty care conditions. You can see a review of this theme that I published in 2014 titled Mitochondrial Medicine Arrives to Prime Time in Clinical Care. Nutritional Biochemistry and Mitochondrial Hyperpermeability Meet Disease Pathogenesis and Clinical Interventions. Again, this article is available for free online and was published in 2014. The major concept here is that while everyone knows that mitochondria make ATP, the cellular currency of energy, people also need to know that damage and dysfunction to mitochondria can occur as a result of deficient diets and chemical pesticide exposures resulting in changes in mitochondrial function with consequences in gene expression, immunity, and the amplification of inflammation. The clinical presentations associated most strongly with mitochondrial dysfunction are diabetes, insulin resistance, hypertension, migraine, fibromyalgia, also Alzheimer's and Parkinson's diseases. So the interventions we can use when we're addressing mitochondrial dysfunction include dietary intervention, especially a low carbohydrate, nutrient dense diet, nutritional supplementation, and as needed, detoxification and depurition to detoxify and remove those poisonous chemicals that are damaging mitochondrial structure and function. A very simple example of the treatment of mitochondrial dysfunction in clinical practice is the use of high-dose riboflavin at 400 milligrams per day in the prophylaxis of migraine headaches. So migraine headaches are a well-known example of mitochondrial impairment helping to improve mitochondrial function through nutritional supplementation, one example of which is riboflavin, another example could easily be magnesium, that helps to improve mitochondrial function and therefore improve intracellular signaling and also reduce intracellular free radical production, which then reduces the activation of these inflammatory pathways and that alleviates the clinical manifestation of this complex disorder that we call migraine. Again, you can see online for free this article that I published in 2014, also another article that I published in 2013, and indeed an entire textbook on this topic entitled Mitochondrial Nutrition and Endoplasmic Reticulum Stress in Primary Care. This was published as a second edition in 2014, and this book is included within Inflammation Mastery published in 2016. Let's take a look at mitochondrial function just to provide you a quick overview. We all know that the production of cellular energy begins with a process of glycolysis. Then we go through the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. We enter the Krebs cycle, and then those final remaining substrates are shuttled through the electron transport chain. So when I'm teaching this information to students, I typically introduce the topic in a rather simplistic manner, as you see here, and we talk about five main components to cellular energy production. Number one is glycolysis. Number two is the pyruvate dehydrogenase shuttle or the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Other substrates can also enter here, but ultimately we enter into the Krebs cycle and then we go to the electron transport chain. So we then detail these five main components. Again, the five main components of cellular energy production, glycolysis, pyruvate dehydrogenase, Krebs cycle, ATP production through the electron transport chain, and obviously other fuels can also enter into the Krebs cycle. Typically, when we talk about mitochondrial dysfunction, we're talking about defects in the Krebs cycle, but more commonly, we're talking about defects in the electron transport chain. Again, for example, if you think of patients with migraine headache, they have numerous defects 
in their production of ATP because of defects in the electron transport chain. And those defects that we see in patients with migraine headaches are almost identical to the defects that we see in patients with fibromyalgia. Mitochondrial dysfunction results in varying severities and clinical presentations of more oxidant production and molecular, including DNA damage, altered intracellular signaling and gene transcription, Increased activation of inflammatory pathways is critical, and that's a common theme that we see across the board with these disorders connected with mitochondrial impairment, insulin resistance and diabetes, and also increased pain perception. Mitochondrial dysfunction leads to disease. We see this in inflammatory conditions, allergic conditions, autoimmune conditions, metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes and hypertension, heart failure, fibromyalgia, migraine, and neurodegeneration, especially the prototypes, Parkinson's disease, and Alzheimer's disease. So this was topic number four in my clinical protocol. We're now going to talk about stress, sociology, and style of living. Special considerations, all of these can start with S, style of living for lifestyle, stress. We want to help our patients reduce their stress, manage it better, and obviously avoid the causes or sources of their stress. Psychosociology, including politics, sleep, quantity, and quality, sweat as a metaphor for exercise, spinal health, including osteopathic and chiropractic manipulation or adjustments, 